Swapping faces in a video used to take pricey tools and hours of work, but now you can do it for free in seconds, even if the results aren't perfect. After months of searching and testing different setups, I finally found a tool that actually makes it work. Every other option I tried was either overpriced, confusing to set up, or left me with glitchy results. But this one finally makes face swaps look smooth, like they belong in the video. In this video, I'll walk you through the free setup I used, the mistakes you should avoid, and the step-by-step -step process to start swapping any face into any video. So the first thing you want to do is head to Pinocchio's website. Pinocchio is basically a virtual machine that makes installing AI and other tools easier without complicated setups or GitHub. Right here on the homepage, you will see a big download button. So click that, and depending on your system, you will want to choose the one that fits you best. As you can see, this tool is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so you should be okay with whatever system you have. Since I got Windows, I'll go with this one. After downloading, you just have to run the installer. If you're on Windows, a prompt will appear asking you to bypass Windows protection. If you're on Mac, drag the Pinocchio app into your applications folder, then run a command in the terminal to finish the setup. Now this is not dangerous, but since Pinocchio isn't official, you'll have to bypass those security steps. Once all the installs are done, you can go ahead and launch Pinocchio. As you can see, this interface pops up. Here you will see a panel with all the apps you have installed before. To find Face Fusion for the first time, you will want to head over to the Discover tab. Face Fusion 3 will appear in this list. So go ahead and click on that and hit the download button. On the installation requirements check, just click install to accept the required files. Once it's finished, Face Fusion 3 will appear in your app list. Open it and click the install option. This step can take a little while depending on your PC, but just let it run and finish. When the installation is done, click run default to continue. After that, simply hit the UI default button and that's it. You are inside Face Fusion 3.3. This process takes longer, but because the program is free and without limits, it's definitely worth it. So let's explore what this tool can actually do. Now that Face Fusion is installed, let's take a look at what the interface looks like. On the left side, you'll see the processor section. Here's where you pick the type of face fusion process you want to run. Think of this as a toolbox where you choose features before running a face swap. By default, face swapper is selected, but you also have options like age modifier, not always accurate, but worth trying, plus expression restorer, face editor, face enhancer, frame colorizer, frame enhancer, and lip syncer. In this video, we're mainly going to focus on the tools that are made for actually swapping faces. Just below that, you'll see the face swapper models. Here, you can choose the model you want to use for this swap. Right now, it's set to HyperSwap 1A256, but as you can see, there are multiple models to choose from, each giving slightly different results. Below that is the pixel boost setting, controlling the resolution and detail of the swap. Next, you have the execution providers. If you're on a PC with a GPU, you'll definitely want to enable this, since it will make the processing a lot faster. Now, here in the center of the interface, you'll see the main source and target panels. This is where you drop your files. In the source box, you upload the face you want to insert. In the target box, you upload the video or image you want to swap your face with. On the right side of the interface, you'll find the face selector options. These settings let Face Fusion pick the right face to use. You can set the mode, assign a reference face, and choose options like gender, race, or age. There's also a section for face mask types, which lets you adjust how the face blends into the target. Finally, there are a lot of extra technical settings lower down, but you really don't need to stress about those unless you're troubleshooting. Overall, everything here is structured pretty logically. Now let's actually move over to running some face swaps. For this first run, I'll use a Jason Statham scene from Snatch. I chose this as our starting point, because his face doesn't have a lot of difficult movement, which should give us a very clean first generation. To do this, upload the video straight into the target panel. Then I'll upload a photo of myself and put it into the source panel. Now the system recognizes the face I'll be using and applies it to the video I've chosen. On the left side, make sure face swapper is selected in the processors list. Then go down to the face swapper model. You can change this if you want, or just leave it as it is. For this one, I'm just going to leave it on the default, because in my opinion, it actually gives a very reliable result. Next, I'll check the execution provider. If you're running on a GPU, definitely enable it, but if you're not, you can just skip past this. Once that's done, I can hit the start button. Face Fusion will begin generating the clip frame by frame. Depending on how powerful your PC is, this part can take a while. You can view a frame while it's working to see the result taking shape. And now that our video is done generating, let's take a look at the result. Man, they named me after the name of the plane. How many people are named after a plane crash? The tracking holds up well, and the phase blends in naturally. That might be because we chose a very simple clip to start with, but either way, it's a very cool looking result. Now for our second generation, I really wanted to showcase just how far you can take this tool. For this one, I'm going with a short clip from Pulp Fiction, the famous scene where Samuel L. Jackson is intimidating this guy in his apartment. What's the matter? Oh, you were finished? Oh, well, allow me to retort. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? 
what I'm gonna do is place my face on this guy right here, so it looks like Samuel L. Jackson is actually intimidating me. I think this will make for a very strong result. Here's how I set it up. I dropped the Pulp Fiction clip, already cut so that all the frames with Samuel L. Jackson are untouched into the target panel. Then I upload my own photo into the source panel and make sure the face swapper is still active. After that, I just hit generate. Already, as the first frames come through, it's looking really good. My face blends naturally with the character and the lighting matches well. I think the final result is gonna look insane. Once all the frames are generated, I take them into my editing tool and stitch them back together into one full video. So let's take a look at the final result. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. You were saying something about best intention. What's the matter? Oh, you were finished. Oh, well, allow me to retort. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? At first, the preview made it look really good, and at the start, the face swap does look solid. But as the video goes on, it gets disappointing, and the eyes are definitely the weirdest part of it all. Overall, it didn't turn out the way I hoped. Let's move on and see if the next test does better. And for our final generation, I wanted to go with something really cool. One of the most iconic horror scenes of all time. Jack Nicholson's Here's Johnny scene from The Shining. The way I'm gonna do this is pretty simple. I'm taking the full scene of Jack breaking down the bathroom door, but I'll only swap my face in when his face is clearly visible. Because of all the action, swapping the entire scene wouldn't give us a clean result. This way, the final edit will show how cool the swap looks without breaking the immersion. So same process as before. I drop my clip into the target panel, upload my image into the source panel, make sure the face swapper is still selected, and then hit generate. Looking at the starting frame of the preview, we can see that it looks a little weird, but still seeing my own face in this setting is honestly a little creepy, but at the same time incredibly fun to watch. Once all the frames are finished, I bring them back into my editing tool, stitch everything together, and this is the final result. Here's Johnny. Out of all of them, this one isn't the worst, and I'd even say it works better than the previous attempt. Still, it was a tough scene to swap, since Johnny's mouth is open and he's showing so much emotion, which makes it hard to get right. The expressions do track, but with all that intensity, the result doesn't feel as strong as the first one. The full scene loses a bit of immersion, but it still has some good moments. So now you know how to install Face Fusion, set up your own swaps, and drop yourself straight into iconic movie scenes or videos. It's honestly crazy how much you can do with this tool, whether it's something simple and fun, or something cinematic and and dramatic like we just tested. Now the results aren't perfect. You can definitely get higher quality with paid options, but still I definitely recommend trying it out for yourself. Play around with different clips, try out the settings, and see what results you can come up with. All the links you need are down in the description. Have fun with it, and I'll see you in the next video.